this all goes back to the pandemic, of course. Pandemic has changed everything. It's changed the whole ball game. And back in March, when everything shut down, people weren't going places, people weren't spending money on vacations and such. And so they decided they were gonna start investing money in home projects, upgrading their houses, and putting pools in their backyards. So demand for swimming pools drastically increased. Okay. However, as the country began to shut down, so did manufacturing plants, so did chemical plants, everything. Everything closed down for you know three months. But pool industry workers were still considered essential, so they were still building pools outside. You know, they were socially distanced, they were safe, they were still building pools, and they were still using supplies. And again, the demand for pools continued to increase. However, there were no um, there were no supplies being manufactured at this point. Um, the demand kept going up. The production of supplies halted, and we were just coming off of a record low industry uh, sales year. So for the entire industry, the year prior, they had not sold a ton of stuff. So what we had in inventory was what they had ordered based on last year's projections, which wasn't very high. So they didn't have a whole lot of surplus anyways. And so while the shutdown occurred, they were digging and pulling out of that inventory and using that to continue building pools to meet the demand. But again, nothing was being replenished. So because of that, all of a sudden we get to a point where there was no more supplies, okay? And builders had to look high and low and they'd get halfway through a pool job and they needed a liner and they couldn't get a liner or they needed PVC and they couldn't find PVC. Um, and that began to be really problematic. So fast forward a couple months after being shut down, not producing anything, when they did finally open, they had backup orders their lists were a mile long, but instead of going back and ramping up production, now they were limited because they were told by the government how long they could be open. They had mandatory cleaning every hour or so, which slowed down production. They also had less manpower in each plant because of social distancing and capacity guidelines. So now a plant that might have had 300 workers in it had to cut that down to, I don't know, 20% which is what, 60 people. So without all those people in there, they couldn't ramp up production. They just, they were simply falling behind where they already were previously. Um, and so production never really caught up. And here we are, we're still a year into this and we're still not at 100%. So that's one big major aspect of it. Um, and when I'm talking materials, I'm talking raw materials needed to build pools. I'm talking chemicals. You're, you you got to think about the labels, the lids, the plastic that it's stored in, the cardboard boxes. I mean, everything. This is broad spectrum. Everything started slowing down and things were harder to get. The cardboard was hard to get to ship it. Um, there was a whole chain reaction. Ports had closed, so shipping and importing products slowed down. Shipping products across the country slowed down. Um, so we had major shipping delays. It was just a really bad chain reaction that didn't just impact the pool industry, but we saw this happen across the board. We saw it with toilet paper. We saw it with uh, Clorox wipes, all kinds of stuff. Another major pro problem was that there's a massive chlorine shortage. Hurricane Laura ripped through this past summer and it was a category four hurricane and it impacted and caused a massive fire at bio labs which made the lion's share of the chlorine in the united states so as if things weren't already bad enough now i'd say you know 60 70 percent of our nation's chlorine supply is gone and no way to make more because of it so we're relying now on what was already in supply and we're relying now on imports from other countries um, which may be inferior products to what Biolab was already making. Um, so that was a major impact. 
again, you're talking, you know, it might have been 70%, I don't know the exact figure, but that was a huge hit. And then pair that with the pandemic and the fact that households were really relying on Lysol wipes, Clorox wipes, well, a huge part of those products are chlorine. So companies were scrambling to get those products made and anybody that was really producing any type of chlorine products were kind of going in that direction as well. And again, pools aren't essential during a pandemic, so they were really focusing on getting those wipes out and not so much on the pool. So that was a little bit of a factor. You know they say they always come in threes. Um, as if these two weren't bad enough, about two weeks ago, the southern half of the United States experienced a freeze like they haven't experienced in many, many years. So we're talking you know, close to 50,000 people who aren't used to winterizing their pool like we are in the north. They don't blow their pipes, they don't cap their, their returns, they don't plug their skimmers. And all of a sudden they were experiencing uh, single digit temperatures for a two week period. So as you can imagine, these pools weren't winterized and they're estimating close to 40,000 pools were destroyed by freeze damage. So that is 40,000 pumps maybe some pools have two pumps so let's say 60,000 pumps 60,000 or 50,000 uh, heaters and and filters and PVC fittings uh, valves you name it that all has to be sent down to Texas to replace all those pools in a market that is already just bone dry and now all of a sudden that's where majority of the inventory needs to go and thankfully distributors are kind of standing their ground and they're saying yeah you know we want to help texas the best we can but we can't let it impact the rest of the country so they are rationing supplies and there are companies that are trying to do the best they can to help but um all in all that there's just not any equipment being made there's no pumps being produced they're on massive back order production's just not fast enough to keep up with it all of the equipment across the board you know something that might have cost 500 two years ago it might cost you 1200 bucks now and that's just kind of that's simple economics you know we can't get them and if we do it's going to take us multiple days of tracking people down and calling in favors and, and it's really really going to be difficult so um keep that in mind yeah so so basically with all the reasons i said and paired with normal inflation um, things are just getting more expensive and to run a business I can tell you I do all my own bookkeeping I cannot sustain my business if I don't raise my prices it's just not gonna happen um, chlorine has almost tripled in price it's doubled and it looks like it's gonna triple um, I cannot do and run my business all summer long like I did last year at those same rates I would be belly up before the summer's even over um, it, it just won't work so when you hear your pool guy and he starts telling you, you know, we've got to charge this, we've got to charge this, um, you know, be mindful of, of the reasons I, I said to you. It's kind of, it's nobody's fault. And unfortunately, um, you know, it is what it is. The pools are kind of a commodity. And yes, there are cheaper ways to care for your pool. In my channel, I've talked about some of those and we'll explore more options throughout my, uh, throughout this, this summer. I'm going to post a lot of videos about how you can save money. But, um, you know, you really don't want to skimp in some areas and you just kind of got to buckle down and embrace yourself. We hope that we can bounce back by next year, but it's looking like it might be two or three years before it gets back to normal. But all in all, it's going to be expensive and that's just kind of how it is. Unfortunately, um, pool companies can't, can't bear the weight of that cost or they'll never survive and it, it'll, the industry will die out. So. I appreciate you guys watching. Um, you know, it's unfortunate. I'm going to have to raise my prices. Everybody else is too. Um, but it is what it is. If you have any comments or anything to add, there are a couple other reasons I left out. I wanted to try to make this, uh, you know, not super long video. So if you have any suggestions, any comments, thumbs up, whatever, uh, let me know. And uh, hit that subscribe button. And uh, as always, you can reach out to me with any questions, concerns, anything. You need help with anything, give me a shout.